God. Let's get into the word of God to our listeners, everybody on that live chat. You're out there. We love you. I have something I believe that's going to help change the trajectory of your life. I want to come from the Synoptic Gospels of Mark chapter number 10. Mark chapter 10, starting at verse number 46. Verse number 46. It says, and they came to Jericho. And as they went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good courage, rise. He calleth thee. And he casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus asked, and Jesus answered and said unto him, What will thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. And tomorrow, and next week, and three months from now, the Bible says, and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. While I have your attention for the next few moments, I want to talk from this particular subject, expensive silence. Expensive silence. You can take your seats. Expensive silence. It is the author, H. Jackson Brown, that probably gave one of the most prolific quotes for me in my reading. And he says this in his quote, there is nothing more expensive than a missed opportunity. Ah, I'm gonna say that again. The author Jackson Brown gave this prolific quote and it says there is nothing more expensive than a missed opportunity. Which says to me, opportunities don't come around that often. Opportunities don't come around that often. As truth be told, opportunity are scarce. They're scarce. That, that word scarce there literally means seldom, seldom to come around. Absolutely, it means to be rare. It's, it's rare, it's rare. If I took a poll, some of you probably need to do a self-evaluation of your own self and know that you are rare. You're, 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 you're rare for, for the young lady that just clapped and the man that just clapped, you're rare. Because if you knew you were rare, you wouldn't let people use you like they, like they use you. When you know your value, when you know your worth, you don't let people use you like they want to use you. God and truth be told, if they knew your value, they wouldn't use you like they use you. As a matter of fact, I'll take time out for about 30 seconds for you to realize that the truth be told, they are blessed that they have the opportunity that you're in their life. Okay, okay, okay. When you start knowing the rareness of you and who you are and your authenticity, baby, you'll see yourself different. And that's not arrogant, that is simply confidence. I know my value, I know what I'm worth, and what I will not do is lower my standards to fit in your ecosystem to make you feel better. Because I'm rare. Somebody shout, I'm rare. rare. Put it in the comment, I'm rare. I'm rare. I'm rare because I know I'm a rare opportunity. I'm rare. You seldom will you get people like me in your life. Seldom will you run across somebody as loyal as me. And now somebody needs to realize it's because of how rare I am that you need to learn how to maximize the opportunities when I show up. 
This is how you know missed opportunity can be expensive. I'm going to date myself. If you can finish this statement with me, then you know you're rare. If I knew back then what I... <laughs> God, if you can just reverse the time, but keep the knowledge that I have. If I knew back then what I know right now, I would take those opportunities and maximize them. Truth be told, you know what? I started the title of this message, I'm shouting for a reason. I started the title, I'm shouting for a reason because I can't explain to people why God has been so good to me and you completely understand it. So every now and then I have to tell you to pardon the interruption. I might shout during the middle of this text. I might scream. It may seem as though I'm having some type of traumatic breakdown. It may seem like I have Tourette syndrome. But what I got was a rhema word to understand that I'm rare and I'm rare air and I refuse to be devalued or be deflowered by anybody who does not know how to handle the authenticity that's on my life. I know I'm a great opportunity what you're shouting, Pastor, because I have a reason to shout. Because silence can be expensive. And as we dance and as we shout, if I recall on Sunday, Bishop said he built this church for worshipers. Uh, he built this church based off the action of praisers. And the one thing I do know is I don't have time to explain to you the reason why I'm praising, because if I have to explain to you, I'm interrupting while I'm praising. Baby, instead of me stop to interpret to you while I'm shouting, you ought to just start shouting with me. Yeah. Let me can, I, can I come and get you? There is something authentic about us. There's something authentic about us. Here's what I'm saying. Uh, if I see a crowd running, toward me, there is nothing in me that's going to be inquisitive to figure out why are we running? What is the purpose we're running for? If I see a crowd running toward me, I'm going to run with you until we stop running. And then I'm going to ask you why. Pause right there. What if we praise like that? What if my whole row just started dancing and I started dancing with them and by the time we finish, baby, I don't care why you dancing. All I know is when you finish, now what were you praising for? Baby, because he's been good to me. He brought my child out of prison. He made sure my bills were taken care of. He brought me into something. So I'm not inquisitive for why you praise. I said, you shouting, it's a combustible. I'm gonna shout with you. Why are you dancing? You have no idea. You have no idea. And if the truth be told, you can really stop and think. You have no idea. Everything God that has brought us through that we should have lost our mind by now. You should have been crazy by now. As a matter of fact, some of us are borderline. Right about there, if one more thing hit my house, Pastor, if one more person talk about me, if one more person say something about me, I'm on the brink of about to lose my mind. As a matter of fact, don't push me because I'm too close to the edge. I'm trying, okay, not to loot. It's like a jungle sometimes that make me wonder how I keep it. I'm, I'm about... I'm about to lose it. And the truth is, I can't explain to you, I can't properly articulate why I'm going through it, but the only thing I can tell you is God is keeping me while I'm going through it. <laughs> somebody shout, he's a keeper. In the middle of the chat, somebody shout, he's a keeper. The problem is knowing that he's a keeper. Behavior therapist does this. Behavior therapy is the action of studying the thoughts, the emotions, and your behavior driven by your mindset. So in their study, they just don't want to know what you do. They want to know why you do what you do. Can you imagine if we took that poll on life? Instead of judging people for what they do, if we stopped and figured out why they do it, 
It may change your perspective and stop being so judgmental about... I'll put it to you this way. It's absolutely wrong to steal. But if I saw a mother with six kids and she didn't have a job and she decided to take some groceries, she is wrong. But I understand a little more of why she chose to do the route of what she's doing. And sometimes we're so judgmental of judging people without knowing why they do what they do because exploring their behavior, we can know how to resuscitate them if we know why they do what they do instead of judging what they're doing. That's a tough lesson to learn because now you got to walk on a level of maturity and say, I'm not going to judge your what. I want to talk to you about your why. Why do you do what you do? Which brings us to verse number 46. The Bible says, and they went into Jericho and they came out of Jericho. And as they're coming out of Jericho, they run into a blind man. They come into Jericho, it's the disciples. They come out of Jericho, it's disciples and a great multitude. Which means somewhere in Jericho, there was a witnessing opportunity where other people started following Jesus. But in them following Jesus, they're following Jesus past dysfunctional people. <sighs> they're walking with Jesus, passing dysfunctional people why we follow Jesus. Okay, I'm going to say it again. The church is gathering people while passing people who are dysfunctional and not wanting to help them because we got what we wanted. Perhaps God is looking for a church who's willing to follow and stop. I know, I, I know, I know this may be antiquated for some people, but I still believe in evangelism. I don't care how much I follow somebody. Baby, if I find you in dysfunction, let me introduce you to a man that brought me out of everything that I... He brought me out of everything that I've been going through because the church is gathering and growing, but walking past the dysfunction. <sighs> You're so focused on him, you're missing them. <laughs> and the text says they're leading out and he's blind. And here's the thing, y'all. I could see if he was blind yesterday. He's been blind his whole life. So which means y'all know who he is. You know who he is so much that Mark gives him a name. Blind Bartimaeus. Okay, now wait a minute. In most texts, it says a certain man or a certain woman, or a blind man. He gives the subject, but he doesn't give the name. Why in all this, he decides to call his name? Which means they're familiar with him. So he's been this way for a long time. Can I pause and suggest this to you? That maybe the people that carried blind Bartimaeus to drop him off at Jericho is the same people that got saved and was gonna leave him in Jericho? Okay, okay, okay. Perhaps the same people that God wants you to win, you're trying to leave behind. I, I, uh, I call that selfish Christianity. Uh, when the truth be told, if we get a relapse of what God has brought us through, I know we can't tell everybody. We don't want God to plug up the USB and put it on the screen of everything that we've done. But every now and then, we have been blind in some areas of our life that we're saying, God, please don't show everybody. Please, please don't show everybody. The one discomfort that's the problem with blind Bartimaeus is everybody sees his dysfunction. Okay, here's my shout all by myself. I am so glad God clipped some of my dysfunction behind closed doors. And I don't know who I'm talking to online. I don't know who I'm talking to in this church. But God says, you owe me a praise because I didn't show everybody. You owe me a praise because I kept some of that stuff a secret. You owe, you owe me a praise because I kept some of your issues in isolation. <laughs> See, I, I owe him my isolation praise. That's like, what is that, Pastor? Stuff you don't know about. Stuff that I thought about doing. Stuff that I did do. But if it had not been for God, that put my issues in isolation because he knew you would judge me while he was making me. 
So he says, here's what I want to do. He says, you're passing a man that has been blind his entire life. Blind Bartimaeus isn't partially blind. He's totally blind. He cannot see. Catch this, which means darkness is normal for him. <sighs> he's been dealing with darkness for so long that he's comfortable in it. Ooh. He's learned how to function in dysfunction. See, some of this stuff we take for granted that we can see our children smile in the morning. We can see this, but can you imagine living a life that you make decisions with no light? Ooh, think about that for a minute. He has to make decisions depending on other people to put him in a place to where he can make it with no lights. See, we get up in the morning to complain about some things and God is saying, here's what I'm getting ready to do. Even in your blindness, blind Bartimaeus, I'm getting ready to put you in new territory. Oh, see, I'm still in verse number 46. He's putting him in new territory because remember, I told you, this is Jericho. Oh, this is New Testament. This is Jericho. Wait a minute. That, that city, Jericho, it means something. It means something in chapter number six of Joshua. It means something. This is the same Jericho that was a distraction, that there was a wall built that was stopping the children of Israel to get into territories. But God says, I'm about to put you in a position that where I'm taking you in the next season, nothing is going to block you. I'm about to move and do something in your life where nothing is going to block you. But the first thing I got to do for six days, you got to be silent. Six days, you got to be quiet. I don't know about you, but that's one of my dysfunctions. <laughs> if I see something distracting me, I don't want to keep silent. There's sometimes I want to say something. And if I'm talking to at least a thousand people that's listening, that you have the problem too, that anytime somebody do you wrong, oh, you want to say something? Anytime somebody, I see, I'm, I'm, I see, I'm revealing my own self right about here. Because I don't know if I could have been quiet for six days. I might have been like, oh, we're going to tear this wall down. Watch it, because they got the promise before they had to be quiet. And sometimes God wants you to be quiet to stir up your enemy so I can draw a crowd. Because he knows day seven is coming. He knows there's going to be a time where you're going to have to open your mouth and say something. He knows there's going to be a time where I'm allow you to open your mouth and reveal something. The Bible says, and when they shout, the wall catch this falls. The first time I read it to, I thought the wall fell down. The Bible does not say it fell down. He says it fell flat. <sighs> Which means it wasn't even block anymore. Which means what was a wall turned to sand. Okay, let me get you. What was a wall turned into a sidewalk? <laughs> so the very thing that kept you blocked, then the next season you're going to walk on it. Oh, the very thing you thought that was going to take you under, God says in 2024, baby, you're going to walk. I'm going to walk on it. I'm going to walk. You thought you had me, devil, but I'm going to. Somebody shall walk on it. So now that becomes prophetic because now we find ourselves with blind Bartimaeus sitting on the sidewalk. <laughs> we find Bartimaeus sitting where his ancestors had victory. <laughs> we find ourselves sitting in the last season of our life where our ancestors had victory but we're still living in dysfunction. The text says that as Jesus was passing by, he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth. Now I've read this and I've read it and I've read it. He said we heard Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Uh, this may not be a popular portion of my message, but it is a true one. Every now and then, God wants to know if he can use you without your name being called. <sighs> Every
every now and then, God wants to know if you can be used in church and you don't need a name tag. I, I told you this might not be the most popular part of my text. We'll shout in a few minutes, but I got to come get you. God wants to know if I can use you and nobody knows your name. My topic is nestled in the text. The Bible says he heard it was Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. My question is, who told him about Jesus? Huh? It does not say he went to evangelical school. It didn't say they had worship service outside of Jericho. As a matter of fact, the Bible only says he begs. So out of his mouth, he's doing one thing, but he has to be in the presence of somebody else who told him of the potential of what God can do in your life. I know, I know that was kind of strange to find because in this day and time, we want people to know who we are. I did it. Let me post it on Instagram. This is what I've done. But God says, sometimes I'm looking for your silence so I can be glorified. Catch this. This ought to be a praise for every mother and father who's been praying over their children and you have not seen the results of what's going to happen. God says, I may not have wanted you to see everything that I'm going to do, but it's going to happen. Okay. 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 I... We have boys too, we have young men, and I've been praying, God bless them, God bless them. God said, do, do I need to do it through you? <sighs> I have three men. My wife called them boys, we argue, they grown men. If I looked over right now, she'd probably look at me with a toned voice, cause those her babies. But to me, they're men. And God is saying, you're praying about something, but do I need you? To be praised for what I'm going to do through them. Or can I send a ram in the bush that's going to change their life? Or do you need your name to get called? Or do they need to say, because it was daddy that this happened. So I start praying, God, continue to bless my kids. I start saying, God, send whoever you want that encounter my children that will need to bless them in the next season of their life. So even if they get blessed and it's not through me, you bless them anyhow. See, I don't need my name to be called. I want whoever, see, see, okay. <laughs> so the text does not identify who is the culprit that tells them about Jesus. But here's my argument. They don't tell them that's happening in their life that he's going to come when he's going to come because he's begging but he doesn't know Jesus is coming and the text says he hears Jesus of Nazareth is coming catch the shawl but he doesn't call him Jesus of Nazareth <laughs> he says Jesus thy son of David Jesus of Nazareth is not his messianic name his messianic name is Jesus, the son of David, which means whoever told him, told him about the intimacy of God. No, you don't call him like everybody else call him. That's why somebody in here today need to hear me. I don't care what your name used to be. Baby, I know what God is calling you in this next season of your life. Don't answer to the other people. Check says he calls him Jesus of Nazareth. That's what the followers call him, Jesus of Nazareth. But the blind man calls him the son of David. Is it possible? Is it possible that the only man that can't see can see? Is it possible? That everybody that's following him is calling him Jesus of Nazareth. But the only person that can't see him knows who he is. <laughs> so I want to talk to somebody today. Baby, which says to me, it does not start with what you see. It starts with what you think. Text says, he calls him Jesus, thy son of David. Have mercy on me. This is a begging man. I, uh, I, in my earlier years, I don't know if they have it now, we went through what's called a hearing exam. 
hearing exam, I don't know if they still do it now. They will put this little thing on the side of your ear. Boom, make that little noise. What happened? Do you hear it? Yeah, I hear it. No, I don't hear it. When I was younger, uh, for whatever reason, he hit the thing, boom, and I started humming with it. Mm, Cause I got a little beat with it. Mm, hey, mm, mm. And the doctor told me this, and it didn't resonate to me until about three days ago, Corey. He hit it, and he said, stop talking. I said, why? Stop talking. He said, because if you're talking, you can't hear it at the same time. <sighs> and it didn't happen until three days ago that I noticed that blind Bartimaeus stopped talking when he started hearing. <sighs> the problem with some of you is you're over talking what God is trying to say to you. And you're saying, why God aren't you talking to me? He says, you're in a hearing exam. Stop talking. I may tell you, love the people that don't love you. <laughs> it is a hearing exam that now puts us in a place to where we got to decide, who am I listening to? And the Bible says, I can't see, but I can see. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Here's where the problem occurs. The follower said, shut your mouth. I'm sorry, let me be politically correct. Hold your peace. Stop calling his name. Church, I have a big problem right here. So you got what you want from him. But now I need something from him. And you're trying to tell me to be quiet because you already have what you have from him. Oh, I want to talk to somebody in the church today who may be listening. I'm not going to let anybody who already have what they got from Jesus stop me from getting what I need to get from him. So if my praise disrupts you, baby, I'm sorry. If my praise irritates you, baby, I'm sorry. If my worship get on your nerve, I'm sorry because you already got you already have what you want from him. You can see. I can't see. I'm trying to figure out why are you stopping me from getting what I want? I'm dysfunctional. You're fine. But you are fine reveals your dysfunction. You're trying to stop me from getting the healing that I need. But y'all, that's not my only argument with the text. Here's why silence is expensive. Follow me. The text says he is sitting by the roadside. He's sitting, which means they're walking by, which means I'm not even shouting on the same level as you. I'm in a posture, sitting down, which means I have to look up to say, Jesus, the son of David, wait a minute, I'm already down and you're trying to keep me quiet? Woo! I want to talk to somebody today who has to muster up enough strength to say, I'm a shout over every barrier, I'm a shout over every obstacle. I'm The text says, he's sitting there, and they tell him, be quiet. Uh, but this one got my attention. He turns the volume up. He doesn't stand up. His voice goes up. Catch this. Sound normally travels on the level that is spoken unless the trajectory of the speaker changes. I believe this, that he goes from sitting to lifting his head up and say, there's no way I'm going to miss this opportunity because you have what you want. I'm going to shout over your head that, baby, I need something from Jesus. And I have a sneaky suspicion that I'm talking to somebody today who needs something from Jesus. I'm a dance, I'm a... 
The text says he's sitting there and he shouts even the more. The Bible says Jesus does not have an appointment with this miracle. The text says he is passing by, which means this appointment, I'm going to have to create this. This next thing I need in my life, God says, I'm giving you power to create this. Catch this. The text says he's sitting there. The Bible says Jesus passing by, but he stood still. He stopped. The Bible says he called him to come here. He says, I command him to come here. Y'all, wait, 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 wait. Rise, he calling you. Get up, he's calling you. I don't have a problem with the command. I got a problem with how is he going to execute the command. He's blind. People have carried him to where he is for so long. Jesus calls him. I would be okay if Jesus healed him and then called him. This is enough for the church already. Sometimes we're looking for people to get healed and then called. God says, I'm calling you and then healing you. He's sitting by the wayside. He says, I'm standing still. Catch this. Y'all go get him. Okay, okay. For my theologians, Jesus does not go to him. He has to come to Jesus. Dysfunctional. Messed up. Out of his mind. Begging. But here's the problem, preacher, I have with the text. The Bible says the people tell him to shut up because he's a beggar. Jesus stops. Wait a minute. Okay, catch this. I'm saying, son of David, you think I'm begging. I say, son of David, he says I'm worshiping. So what some people see as begging, Jesus sees as worship. So when you see me crying, you think something wrong with me. But when I'm really crying, I'm worshiping. I wish I had somebody who can explain their worship. The text says, He's sitting there, the people think he's begging, but he's really worshiping. And the only person that could discern the worship is Jesus. So Jesus tells him, y'all tell him to come here with no assistance. I got a problem. I got a problem until I read an article about a blind man who was skateboarding. And I thought that was interesting. How can a blind man skateboard and avoid obstacles, avoid accident, and avoid distractions. That's crazy. I can't even skateboard and I can see. And I'm saying, how in the world is he not causing an accident? Until I read further in the article, and they said, how are you not falling? He says, because I make a sound. <sighs> and when I make a sound, my sound goes to the object in front of me bounces off the object, comes back to me, and it tells me what's in front of me. Wait a minute, there's another animal that uses that, it's called echolocation. And then I began to think, I say, wait a minute. He says, I make a noise, I can't see it. It bounces off the object in front of me. It comes back to my audio cortex. It goes into my auto cortex, reveals to my visual cortex, and then my motor cortex responds to my visual cortex. And he said, this was in front of me, all of that, and he can't see. I say, wait a minute, all of that came from you making a noise? He said, absolutely. And then I began to understand praise. And I began to understand why the saints say, you don't have to wait till the battle is over. You can shout. Oh, somebody better get what I'm saying. He simply says, baby, if I shout on Wednesday, our Thursday is bouncing back. Okay, okay. I'm going to get, I'm going to get back down. I'm going to get back down now. Oh. He says, it goes, hits the object, comes back to my auto cortex, which is my ear, 
my auto cortex revealed to my visual cortex was in my brain, and my brain says to my motor cortex, my motor cortex, how to respond to it. And then praise says to me, wait a minute, that's how I know it's already done. Because I made a sound. And my sound went to next Monday, came back to Wednesday, and told me by this time next week, everything's gonna be all right. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but the Lord say, yo shout today has already made it to next week. So baby, you ain't have to wait. See, they think I'm crazy. I ain't crazy because I've already seen what he's gonna do for me. And I thought about <laughs> the blind man sitting by the wayside. And the text says, he's calling you. Can I have two seconds of Bible study? If you read it, it says he is calleth thee. Calleth. Anytime at the, any word you see ETH is present particle. Present particle is ing. Ing mean it's continuing to happen. So Jesus really didn't call him one time. He is calling, 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 echo calling. He is calling him. And I'm talking to somebody today that God is calling. He said, uh, He says, He is calling you. He does something oh, that I think is so unique. Uh, the Bible says he throws off his garment and he rolls. He throws off his garment and he rolls. Hey, y'all, we can't blow past that. You can't blow past that. He throws off the residue of yesterday. Which says to me, it is not God's total responsibility for you to deliver you from your past. Sometimes you gotta view people as garments. I dare you when you go to work tomorrow and somebody start to get on your nerve, just say, they gonna say, what's wrong with you? Baby, you don't understand. <laughs> I'm just throwing off <laughs> bad decisions. Somebody shout, throw it off. In the comments, type, throw it off. I'm throwing it off. He says, y'all, this is, he throws it off and he's not healed yet. He throws it off without being healed in totality. Which says to me, you can walk in some level of dysfunction but be strong enough to get rid of the old residue of what people thought you needed. Uh, uh, help me right here. He says, he arose, and the Bible says, he comes to him. Oh, okay, okay, I lost it the first time too. The Bible says, he arose, make sure I read it right. I read it, bro, he arose, he came to him. Um. Who guided him? Yes. Who, who to, if they would have said he carried him to Jesus, I would have understood that until I restudied again the word calling as an echo. So his ears became his eyes. So, so what he's really saying is I can't see, but whatever you do, don't stop calling my name. I can't see every decision that needs to be made. I don't understand every interview I need. But God, I'm walking through this season of my life blind. But whatever you do, don't stop calling my name. Somebody shout, keep calling me. 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 The text says, He's calling him, and he makes it to him, but he makes it there blind. 
He stood there and Jesus says, he gives him a blank check. What do you want from me? What, catch this, this is what he really saying. What do you think I have the capacity to do for you? Because his request was, have mercy on me. He never said, heal me of my blindness. He asked for mercy to get his attention. But mercy brings him to attention. So he says, catch this, what do you think I have the capacity to do for you? He said, master, that I receive my sight. Okay, I need you to understand this. I always thought he wanted sight because he just needed to be like everybody else. But here's what I found out. When he got his sight, it changes his ecosystem. When he got his sight, he didn't need to have the bag again. Okay, this is so good. This is, now I don't need for money. I can go get my own. Can I say this to somebody today? Some people want you to stay blind because it makes them feel important. He says, what do you want from me? He said, I want to receive my sight. But I love his answer. He says, today, you made whole. Wait a minute. I only ask you for one thing. I only ask you for the dysfunction that I knew what was wrong with me. What you did was stepped in the gap and gave me everything I didn't know I needed. I, ooh, somebody better hear me today. God is getting ready to give you something you didn't pray for. God is about to open a door that you didn't know you even wanted. You didn't even know you needed a house that big. God says, I'm gonna bless you anyway. You didn't even know you needed that job. God says, I'm gonna give it to you anyway. You didn't even know you need that amount of money, but God says, I'm gonna give it to you. Somebody shout, give it to me. Here it is. He says, what I'm getting ready to do is I'm gonna make you whole. So I asked God the question, God, I'm done. I says, what is it when you say make you whole? He says, because you thought being blind was the only place you were leaking. You do not know I can heal you of your blindness, but you're still codependent on people. So what I'm doing is I'm healing you of needing people to validate the next season of your life. And I'm talking to somebody today that you think you need them to tell you you're going to be great. Baby, you already going to be great. I don't need anybody to tell me the oil that's on my life because he already. The text says, he says, all right. And immediately, and immediately he was made whole. Here's what I'm finished. In one version, he told him, go your way. Go your way. You already made whole. But Mark says, his way is to follow Jesus. Now, y'all, <laughs> I'm about to shout my own self crazy. <laughs> the Bible says that there's a multitude who didn't know who he was. But he put one that's getting ready to change a whole atmosphere. Somebody better hear me today that God assigned you to be the one that's going to break generational curses off of your family. God said you are the one that's going to bring generational wealth to your Somebody shout, I'm the one. <sighs> Here's where I settle because silence 
is too expensive. It's costing me too much to be quiet. It's costing my family too much to be quiet. And I refuse to let the enemy distract me in the next season of my life because he's trying to intimidate me from being quiet. And I wish I had at least a thousand people online and a few hundred that's in here that will shout even in the midst of everything the devil's trying to throw your way. <laughs> Y'all be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet, be quiet online. Be quiet. No, I'm not going to be quiet. I've come too far. I've been through too much. I refuse to become a victim of silence. And I want to do this for everybody. Could be one, could be a thousand. For everybody who has felt in 2023 like you were blind Bartimaeus, but you needed God to pass by during this Wednesday revival and you feel this is your season that God is passing by. God says, I'm not stopping unless I hear a sound. And if there is anybody that since in this spirit of your life that you need for him to stop by, I want you to run to this altar. I don't care who you came with. I don't care if you're by yourself. I want you to run There's a sound. 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 Oh! Sister Baker don't know what she did when she was screaming. And the Lord put in my notes, he says, don't ever miss an opportunity to say something in this season of your life because the devil will make you miss him passing by. Catch this y'all, catch this, no tripping, read the text. Jesus ain't coming by no more. He's on his way to his crucifixion, which means this is the last opportunity this is the last time. What if I told you this may be the last time? He's passing by and the church is telling him to be quiet as though they don't understand. I done went through too much hell. I done dealt with too much foolishness. How dare you have the unmitigated goals to tell me to be quiet and you don't even know me. <sighs> For everybody that's here on this altar, I want you to hear me and hear me good. God said, what you don't want to do is holler around the wrong people. So what I'm going to ask you to do over the next 10 seconds is going to be self-activated. This is not about your neighbor. This is not about who you came with. This is not about who you rolling with. For the next 10 seconds, I dare you to shout as though this was the last opportunity that God was going to answer your prayers. Oh, I want you to dance like this was the last opportunity that God is going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout online. Shout like you Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, 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 I've been through too much. I've been through too much. I've been through too much. Online, you've been through too much. Ah. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Can I, may I, if you'd allow me to tell you what just happened online in the sanctuary, the Lord said that was echolocation. <laughs> when you just made a sound, your sound went into the future, came back to your visual cortex. And you just realize God is making a way out of no way. <laughs> you just got a glimpse of the promises that God had on your life. That all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And that are called. According to his purpose. It's echolocation. I'm done right here. So I, I've noticed this. Uh, I've never been one, but I've always been enamored by EMTs. I just, I love them. I think what they do is absolutely amazing. But they have to follow the law until there's an emergency. They have to follow all the laws until it's an emergency. And I was sitting at the red light one day, and there was one, two cars behind me, and I just caught a glimpse. And all of a sudden, his lights came on. And then he started making a noise. And I've noticed as he made the noise, cars started moving. <laughs> Everything was in the way until there was a call for an emergency. And then he started making noise. And everybody that understood knew when the siren came on, you got to move out the way. Okay, okay. Oh, I wish, can I be country for just one second? Can I be country? I wish I had some ambulance simply in here that said I need some stuff to move out of the way. And baby, I'm making a sound that <laughs> Yeah! Yeah! Move out of the way! Catch this! The ambulance never asked me to move out of the way. He didn't come over the speaker and say, 
I need you to move. The sound was an indication of everything that's in the pathway of me getting to my destiny has to move out of the way. Everything that's in front of me and the siren is so loud it can be heard a mile up the way that everybody knows what's in the way ahead. I need you to get out of my way. And I don't know what's happening in your February, in your March, in your April, in your May. But somebody ought to type, get out the way. Get out the way. Every distraction, get out the way. Every hindrance, get out the way. Every bad individual, get out the way. Because I'm walking in two. A- <laughs> right. You better come on. Come So, for the next season of my life, silence is too expensive because it's costing me my freedom. It's costing me my deliverance. And as I told you, as John Henry Brown say, there is nothing more expensive than a missed opportunity.